we need to be ready to be the solution to those problems, to be ready to bring healing, whether that be supernatural through ministry or whether that be through frequency or any other form of type of healing that we're learning about, whether it be essential oils or different light and sound therapies, all sorts of different frequency things that can bring about healing and change. Um, and those who are going to live in health and wholeness, despite stuff going on in the world. Several years ago, you mentioned that there would be a shaking of all the earthly systems. Yeah. And it looks like we are progressing uh, in that direction because it looks like I mean, even to the point of where you don't know whether it's going to be nuclear war or not, you know, whether someone is going to cross the line and uh, it's a, become a scary place. Um, and so how, like, what what kind, how, what do we expect in the future? Will there well, really be a... I think we need to legislate for what we want in the future rather than wait for what we're going to expect. So if there is going to be shaking, and I do believe you know, if the kingdom of God is going to be established, then the systems that are in place right now, people are going to abandon. So they're going to realize these man-made systems don't work and they've got to look for something else. You know, they're not they're not managing the, the planet. They're not managing people. They're all fighting over territory and all of that sort of negative stuff that comes out of division and, and competition. You know, that is what is the enemy's plan to keep things unstable so that things don't change. Um, the same people make all the money out of stress and divisiveness and war and famine. You know, the same people make the money out of building back the infrastructure and loaning people billions of dollars and all this stuff. So ultimately, we need to legislate for a transition which is not revolutionary. I don't believe nuclear war and that stuff because I believe there's too much legislation going on for peace and God is a God of peace. And therefore, I don't believe the planet is going to be destroyed and wiped out and all of that type of apocalyptical thing. Uh, but I do believe that people have to recognize that there are no solutions in the systems that we've made, including our form of government. Democracy is no better than any other form of government because it creates division. You know, we got two big elections um, coming up. We've got our election is the beginning of July. Um, we've got the U.S. election in November. You know, it is going to divide the country because basically if you vote for someone you didn't, you know, you wanted and they didn't get in, then you're not happy about it. And unfortunately, the way partisan uh, ship has gone in the last 20 years people are no longer particularly in the u.s wanting to work together in cooperation they're just operating on party line so they basically try and stop everything the other party wants to do whether it's good or not which is not you know it's just not working because people have aligned to personalities false messiahs if you like those personality types are narcissistic and they always want control and they want people to follow them and follow what they're saying blindly. Hence, you get all the conspiracies and the stuff which get people aligned to certain ways of thinking and looking. And, you know, ultimately it doesn't work. It isn't working. And I think those things will begin to fail. The financial system is basically based on nothing. You know, there is no hard gold asset behind most currency. It is an electronic transfer. People are making sort of money by betting against this and that and the other. And I mean, it's just, you know, there's no real, you know, God was totally against usury. And therefore making money by making interest is wasn't God's wanting what god wanted therefore to have people making money on other people's misery or the failure of a crop or whatever it might be just isn't the system which is sustainable and it's all based on electricity and if you didn't have any electricity 
you wouldn't be able to access any funds. So I believe as these systems are going to be shaken, just like Jesus warned the first century Christians, the early church, what to expect and the signs to look for in the coming generation so that they could be prepared for the end and the beginning. And um, then he warned them of various signs, you know, signs leading up to it and then very specific signs when this was just about to take place. So then get ready and leave, get out, run, which they did because they were looking for the signs and they saw the signs. Um, and if we are looking for the signs that lead to when these things are going to happen, I believe God will show us, get your money out. Whether it's your pension pots, whether it's your savings, whatever you've got invested, whether it's cryptocurrency or anything else, get it out and then put it into something which is an asset which you can then use in going forward, whether that be gold or silver, lithium or whatever it might be. Put it into something and ask God, obviously, what to put it into so that you won't then be reliant on a system that is collapsed, particularly when it comes to finances because if there is no access to electronic transfers of money then you need something tangible and i think god will give us the signs and the thing and say take your money out get it out of that system because it is going to collapse and have some form of asset whether it's land or gold or silver which generally holds its value or will probably go up in value if the financial system crashed you know those people who got tangible assets will be in a very good position to use those for good you know not not selfishly but to establish a different form of financial system a different form of government which is covenant you know god operates on covenant so god people once people operating in union so they're in covenant and relationship and become family working together for everyone's good and benefit so it's going to require a transfer a transition out of an old system i think people will start to rebel against the governmental systems that they've got and just stop cooperating with it so that we'll need a different form of government now i don't believe god wants anarchy um people doing their own thing but i do believe he wants peace so there's a way of bringing peace, um, which will mean it isn't total chaos and everything completely up in the air. So transition is much better than a revolution, but we need to be get, get ready and we need to legislate for a peaceful transition, which isn't going to create more wars and more tension and more of that stuff, but well, we grassroots people rising up and saying enough, enough. We're not we're not prepared to tolerate the planet being abused any longer. And people are people are beginning to become more aware and become more vocal and they're starting to put pressure on government to respond. But then, you know, you get anomalies. Uh, and if not an anomaly gets into power, they can cause a disruption of what people are trying to do and i think i believe we need to legislate for a change the collapse or shaking of things to allow people to come out of them you know the health system all of that stuff i'm not against medicine because i think it can help people you know or are not in a position to live in full health as yet it can help but there are better forms of medicine there are new forms of medicine there are new frequency types of healing and things that are available and becoming more available ready for when things aren't able to be coped with we need to be ready to be the solution to those problems to be ready to bring healing whether that be supernatural through ministry or whether that be through frequency or any other form of type of healing that we're learning about whether it be essential oils or different light and sound therapies, all sorts of different frequency things that can bring about healing and change. Um, and those who are going to live in health and wholeness, despite stuff going on in the world. You know, it's like they're 
you know, I was around people who had COVID for months, you know, living in the same house, traveling in the same car. I didn't get COVID. I had no intention of getting COVID because my mindset was, no, my body can fight this. I don't need to succumb to this. I live in health. Now, I, I'm aware that's not the case for everyone, but we need to get like that. We need to get to the point where we live in health and wholeness and, and in which we are operating on a completely different heavenly governmental position. There's no sickness in heaven. So if we're going to see heaven on earth, then there'll be no sickness where heaven is manifested on earth. So we've got to get ready to manifest heaven on earth and live under the economy and government of heaven on earth, not subject to the shakings because in Hebrews, where it says, you know, everything will be shaken that can be shaken. Now, that was talking about the end of the old covenant system and it was shaken. But what was left? The kingdom of God was left when everything else was shaken and the and the covenant came to an end. The new covenant was there in the kingdom of God to be established and go on. Now, I do believe shakings can take place not just once. You know, if biblically, you could say, well, that took place and that's done. But that doesn't mean God doesn't use the same methodology over and over at times to bring about the same results. So I expect the kingdom to be standing firm on solid ground when other things are shaky and wobbly and people are fearful of it. So if they're fearful, we need to be the people they come to to find peace and to find love. Perfect love casts out fear. So we've got to have God the true version of God, who he really is, to show people this is the solution. This is the answer. It's a relationship with this good, loving God who cares for you and wants the best for you, who has a governmental system which is based in love, righteousness, peace and joy, which will bring about a complete change from what is what we're used to right now. But it's not going to happen with a magic wand wave. It's going to be an infiltration of that into the systems, assimilating those systems so that those systems collapse. And the people who are no longer following those systems will then continue to basically find the way by following the father. And I think the father will lead the way. But we've got to get ready. And I think we should be asking now, what are the signs? What would we need to be aware of and show us when we need to be ready to deal with whatever's coming? And I think we can be wise. You know, the, the whole thing with the wise virgins with their lamps, they had their lamps filled with oil. And they had the lamps with enough extra oil to be able to fill them and keep them burning. So we need to be ready, prepared. And I think that's our role in seeking God, finding in God, in a sense, the signs and the way forward and then be ready, prepared. So building up health and wholeness now, getting ready for whatever is coming in terms of the financial situations, having alternative forms of government and presenting a kingdom creational way of looking at the planet and everything else getting ready for all that you know but legislating that there won't be the enemy's plans to rob kill and destroy will come to nothing that there won't be nuclear war or civil wars or whatever else you know we need to start legislating for peace ensuring that we're protecting the earth from the changes that are going to take place you know and there could be some changes which are dramatic changes you know things shift you know that we could have huge sun issues and sun flares and sun radiation things there could be changes in the gravitational field there could be all sorts of things that happen but no matter what happens we need to be remain in a place of peace and rest and be ready for it you know and that means being able to create and to operate in a in a governmental way with as in the image of God um, in his likeness. And if we need something changed, we change it. But we don't change it in the way it's been done before. We 
change the reality around us by calling things that be not as if they are, by creating change and bringing about that change, not just repeating the past issues and then creating another system which is going to fail again. We've got to abandon the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and start finding what is God's original purpose and see it restored. How would God want us to live on earth? How, you know, Christians can't live even amongst each other, let alone anybody else. I mean, it's, it's not exactly harmonious, is it? You know, out there. And we've got a whole lot of different ideas and ways of doing things, but we need to come Forget all that and come together with one heart, the heart of God, which is going to be a heart of love. Stop arguing over meaningless stuff like theology and doctrine and find the relationship in God, which will give you a clear, solid foundation and a plumb line to which to build and align things to, which I think is what God is going to do. And I think people are beginning to awaken to that. The more and more people are disillusioned with life as it is more and more people are disillusioned with religion more and more people are disillusioned with governments you know they're realizing no matter who what government comes in it isn't working and if you look at some of the big governmental democracies they're not finding one candidate who's winning india basically coalitions south africa coalitions and actually, the ANC is having to be in coalition with the Afrikaans groups. So it's like, you know, well, actually, that's a good thing because that means they've got to work together. And I think they are going to be less and less clear cut things and a lot more things. And I think forms of democracy, which are A, B, black and white, probably are going to have to change and in the UK, we we have first past the post, so we don't have proportional representation. So you might have 10 percent of the people voting green and they might have one MP at 700. But 10 percent of the population voted for them because they were sympathetic to those values, but they don't get any representation in government. Now, if that is going to change, people are going to have to change it because the government isn't going to change it because they're not going to change it. So they don't have a get into power because there would always be coalitions if that was the case now i think coalitions correctly done gives you a balance of different viewpoints so that different more sensible things can be done perhaps but i think there's less and less black and white and more gray if you like and actually what is gray a mixture of black and white which is actually okay you know, because people are beginning to come into harmony and agreement and compromise to make things. Hey, what's best for the planet? What's best for people rather than what's best for the two percent who've got most of the money in the world? You know, so that means grassroots change. And I think the protest movements and people starting to rise up that I think is going to increase and increase and people are going to actually make their voice heard. And hopefully we need to legislate that that will be peacefully heard, you know, won't be hijacked by those who want to create chaos and violence and anarchy out of it. But but a peaceful movement to change. I mean, we've seen it in the past. I mean, it often starts with with sort of terrorism, but eventually there becomes democracy or government in it like Northern Ireland. No one foresaw the Good Friday Agreement. But people were working at it. People were praying into it. God, God's heart was to bring about unity, union, in a sense. And eventually the terrorism ended and those who were terrorists ended up in government. And they are the biggest party now. But they, they're not going to just annex, you know, the Northern Ireland and make it part of Southern Ireland because it's a, it's a democracy there are votes. People, you know, have their say in that thing, but it changed. So the whole terrorism thing changed, you know, because it didn't work. And eventually people negotiated peace settlements. The same in South Africa, 
you know, apartheid was opposed, but Nelson Mandela primarily did it in a philosophical way and got support from the rest of the world who alienated South Africa for the apartheid system. And eventually it changed. Now, it's not solved all their problems, but it changed. And Mandela was a force for good who sought reconciliation, not revenge. Let's put the past behind us. Let's move forward together. It's not worked perfectly, but it isn't apartheid. Now, of course, you've got those who are the Afrikaans and there's who will be saying, well, we're now the minority and we're now being treated. Well, yeah, probably so. There has been a pendulum swing and it's gone the other way, but it needs to come back. So every person is treated with respect and has equal value within a society. So you have seen change. I mean, who foresaw the, the Soviet Union breaking up and the Berlin Wall coming down? Well, how? Pressure from people, pressure from the people in Poland, pressure from the people within Russia. Ultimately, you had a couple of voices with some common sense who started to work towards a change and change took place. You know, I mean, if you're brought up like me in the 60s and 70s and all that, you would have never foreseen the Cold War coming to an end like that. Now, I know we've got problems because we've got a dictator there now. So ultimately, you've swapped one system for another wrong system. But ultimately, it did change. And I think we need to see change can take place. And we need to legislate for the changing to take place in a peaceful transitional way but we can't just sit back and wait and hope something's going to happen we need to start calling it into being we need to start coming into agreement being enlightened having agreement with people putting aside their differences within kingdom pe people and focusing on what god wants and what god's heart is um and let's start majoring on what is the main thing let's bring about peace on earth let's bring about the kingdom of god established you know so it can happen it has happened and i think we can see it continue to happen but we need to be active proactive seeking god for the transition the wisdom the strategies what we should be doing in this period how we can get ready and then look to see that legislation bring about the change you know but do it in the right way you know i'm going to go to war spiritually you know i'm i'm into restoration therefore if there are things which are contradictory to god's kingdom and what he's doing then we need to see those things restored and brought on to the good side you know even Darth Vader ended up good in the end. You know, it's like there was still good in him, you know. And actually, what did he do? Cast off his black suit and become a shining light in the in the movie. And ultimately, that's exactly what happens when you see the restoration of fallen beings. They're cast off their dark suit and basically the light which is still in them bursts forth and they discover their true identity because Darth Vader no longer was called Darth Vader. He was called Anakin Skywalker because he was restored back to his true identity, not the identity that he was manipulated in by, you know, wherever he was, Darth Sirius, the emperor, you know, but this is, these things have analogies, you know, it's like, all those fallen angels didn't just happen to end up being fallen angels by accident. They were manipulated and deceived into following a path, the dark path. But there's no reason why they can't be restored to the right path to find the, their identity again. So let's see things restored. That will bring about the change because we will have more and more on our side working for good and less and less operating looking for 
that Luciferian agenda, which is going to bring about, you know, worship of Lucifer as God. Ultimately, it's not going to happen. You know? And we need to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, like there are still people with the with that uh, Luciferian agenda because there's still a move to collapse governments internally and hand over the reins of power to uh, the United Nations and um, so that there's a nucleus of a group that we don't know whatever you call them um, sort of neocons or uh, but but they are still very active. Uh, they still uh, have hopes that this will, uh, I mean, I'm 100% convinced that it will never happen. There's no way it will happen. We, we're going to have an absolutely brand new form of government in the future, a very godly kind of government, but um, but they, they still won't stop. You know? Yeah, and we need to see them restored, you know, and we need to see them brought out of darkness into light. We're not going to do that by trying to destroy them or coming against them with the same spirit they're operating in, we need to see change through love. Now, that doesn't mean we sit back and let them do what they want to do. We can choose to stand for good and for, for righteousness and peace and joy, and we don't have to cooperate with those people. Now, those people are the people who have a lot of most of the money, and they control the media, and they control a lot of those systems Therefore, we need to start looking at how we can remove power from them legitimately by not going along with those ways that they do things. You know, it takes a grassroots movement to change it. it there has to be people have to rise up. You're not just going to change it by getting rid of them because someone will just replace them. You know, if you just get rid of somebody, someone else will fill the vacuum. What you have to do is bring about change, you know, and I'm sure in the Soviet Union, when you had, you know, Gorbachev and Yeltsin and those who, who were part of that sort of glasnost and perestroika and all that stuff that was going on during the late 80s into the 90s and all of that. Something must have changed their philosophy from being hardline communists to seeing we need to bring about change um, in this situation. And something changed them. Well, who changed them? And they, I mean, God was at work of bringing about those changes. They learned that communism doesn't work. That's how it yeah. felt. Yeah, part of that yeah. was it. But then that's what people need to see. And then if people see, you know, the financial system that we have right now it doesn't work. It just makes the same people more and more money and keeps the same people poor and thrives on their misery and all of that stuff, then people need to stop operating in that system. Therefore, we need to maybe have alternative systems. Kingdom government, kingdom bank. Whereas that money is not going to be used if for usury. It's not going to be used for lining the pockets of the rich, but it's going to be used for good. So people will need to start taking their money out of the systems that those people who are using it to fund their agendas take it out. If they've got no money. They've got no power. We have the money, you know, that you can say they they control it, but it's our money primarily. Take it out when the time is right. Remove the power from them. But there's got to be something to replace it, which is run correctly under under heaven and not earth. And, you know, the danger is you sort of run to the next prophetic voice who's telling you to go and buy cryptocurrency, all this stuff. Cryptocurrency operates the same way electronically. If there's no electronic system, if that suddenly collapsed, then it ain't going to work. So we need to look at it a different way of looking at it. You know, and there are systems, there are cooperatives, there are credit unions, there are things which are designed to operate in a charitable way, looking to help people and benefit people and help people in their lives rather than make money for 
the big banks and the big financial you know control system people you know and whatever you want to call them you know and i don't like to use terms which are so conspiracy based and you know uh, because it just fuels other people's views of things and f views the wrong way of looking at it i believe change can take place as god changes people you know and when people change things change and if more enough people change then things will begin to change away from those systems but we've got to expect that they're not going to like that so you know they're not going to you know want free energy you know when that becomes available whether it's coal fusion or whether it becomes available through zero point energy or whatever or gravitational energy or whatever it might be you know they're not going to want that so they're going to try and oppose the free giving of that to the world they're either going to try and buy it up or they're trying to suppress it like the oil companies have done with technology over the years that didn't didn't maintain their interest so they basically suppressed it bought it up or stopped people being able to bring it to market you know well you know if if the technology is released and the and the discoveries come out of heaven we need to have the right people administrating them and there needs to be those who can finance and and then make it happen to enable free energy to come around if free energy came about that would change the world because the people who control the fossil fuel and other forms of energy at the moment are the same people who basically have all the financial money in the in the banking system and all of that and at the end of the day if suddenly there was free energy available for everyone off grid that would change things and i think we need to look for those things to be released you know and there are there are people who are developing water engines and water boilers in that they don't boil water they they produce hydrogen out of the water and the hydrogen actually is what produces the car and there there are vehicles right now in things that can run on water you just fill them up from a hose and they'll run on water now of course as soon as you've got that then water becomes an issue that people will start rationing it'll go up hugely in value so we need to make sure the water is not controlled by people who are then going to use that against free energy whatever you know so it's all these things that you have to think about got to prepare for and not just think oh there's a solution because there's always a knock-on effect in lots of different areas that we need to take care of so if suddenly all cars could run on water then you can guarantee that people will start charging more for water so we need to, our own sources of water so we need our own boreholes we need our own sources we need community water rather than governmental water or private company water who are there to make profit you know so we we have to look a, a forward to managing how we do this stuff in the future you know sometimes the unintended con consequences of like for instance now the um, sanctions that they've used against countries and so uh, in order to bypass the the sanctions they are actually formulating a new way of exchange rates based on commodities and gold and so uh, that that's a death blow actually to the uh, current system which is actually about to fail um, the sovereign debt crisis that's coming on is because we can't roll over debt anymore. It's like there is a limit to how far they can go. And so, but they want to collapse the system into a digital currencies and control that also. They, I mean, they're, they don't ever give up, you know. Um, okay. Never let a crisis go to waste, they say. Well, that's it. They create the crises. Yeah. But then they make money out of the crises. And, you know, two or three years ago, when we started engaging the Earth Shield, and started engaging in looking at what was operating on the earth and in the earth and behind a lot of these systems you know you saw what god's desire was then you saw the counterfeit and you saw the beings that were behind the counterfeit 
and then you need to engage those beings. And there were three beings we came across who were operating. There were groups of beings, but of an order operating in Yellowstone Park in the U.S. Devastation, disaster um, and destruction. Three beings who had been who were looking to bring about destruction through the super volcano, which is in Yellowstone Park. And if that went off um, and, it, and it erupted, the whole of the U.S. could be covered in ash. It could crop failure. It would basically wipe out, you know, that that whole thing. So we saw it. We saw their agenda and we engaged them. We saw in the engagement what their strategy was. We turned them and saw them restored and they were restored to their original names and identities, which was conservation and preservation um, and construction. Um, and then we found out what they did through history, where they were involved in so-called natural disasters and all sorts of things. They were behind uh, causing destruction through war and other things. And they were using people and manipulating people and controlling people and to bring about destabilization of the world so there will be no peace. And then in the crises that ensued in all these situations, the same people made the money and took control. So we need to make sure that those things don't operate. They don't operate and bring disaster and destruction and devastation whether it be through floods or whether it be through famines or whether it be through other things, whether it be through eruptions or earthquakes or tsunamis or other other things where they use so-called natural things, the wind and rain and other things to bring about these crises. And then those crises effectively then are manipulated by the same people. So we need to make sure that those beings are not operate in that way and if and be wise and operate in the earth shield and shield the earth from influence on from the outside and so we're also able to see the strategies that's going on on the earth and when i was looking and and we were observing they were just dark pockets you know just pockets of darkness where i couldn't see into them so it was like they were shielded so you couldn't see what was going on so we had to penetrate that shield penetrate the darkness with light and then when we saw what was going on and we saw those beings, then we saw them restored. And that was just one each who were operating in Yellowstone Park. There's obviously a whole load of them operating around the world. So we need to target them for restoration to make sure that they're not going to be facilitating these crises that go on and on all the time. But we need peace. And that means not just peace with no lack of war, conflict between people. We need planetary peace. We need peace from the Earth's core, the Earth's crust. We need the tectonic plates to come back into a peaceful existence and not be in tension and not be producing earthquakes and eruptions and all that sort of stuff. You know, so we need to start legislating for a global creational restoration and work together for the cooperation of the planet as sons of God, because that's the sons of God. It's our responsibility as sons of God to administrate the freedom of creation. You know, so, so, you know, that means working with the elementals. It means working to make sure that what's going on on the earth is operating in peace. And like the, the principles are the same. Um, I think some time ago you said uh, to live... Uh, perpetually in God's blessings mm -hmm. we need to establish things first in heaven uh, before we establish them on earth and then living and I think you gave four points then and you said you have to have an attitude of sonship, sonship. Mm -hmm. you have to actually be living in um, the four principles I don't remember exactly mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same principles that govern uh, you know, living in sonship and being a living sacrifice or at, at all times uh, where God initiates the changes in in where he wants to 
So could you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, well, I, I think that is really uh, our identity as sons and our position in heaven, seated in heavenly places, functioning as the order of Melchizedek. So we're functioning as priests and kings and oracles and legislators. So we're close to the Father's heart. We know the Father's heart. We establish the Father's heart through government. We outwork that as an oracle. So we call it into being creatively and we legislate for its function on the earth. Those are sort of the outworkings of our sonship through that order of Melchizedek. We are a royal priesthood. We are oracles and legislators. We found things on the truth when we become the word made flesh effectively. Jesus is the word of God made flesh, dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Well, we need to operate as sons of God, having the power of speaking for God as his voice. And when we speak with his voice, creation responds to us and we find the quantum realm collapses into reality. We change the reality of things quantum wave functions collapse into the choices that are aligned to the heart of god and that's our sonship that is what we're called to do that's who we are we establish it in heaven because we're seated in heavenly places we're aligned to the father's heart in heaven and then we begin to bring heaven to earth to outwork heaven on earth through our lives and corporately through those people who are together with one mind the mind of christ and our sonship identity comes out of love we need to know our origin in god we need to know who we are who we were who we are going to be so that we can outwork our identity in made in the image of god in that creative way you know we're created in god's image to be creative you know to establish co-heirship in everything Therefore, we need to know a, who we are, but we're only going to know who we are if we know who God is. And in knowing who God is as love, then we will change the way we do things to do things always aligned to love. That will change the whole way in which we respond to the world situation, how we outwork that government, not in a controlling uh, warfare type of way but in a, a legislative loving way to bring about peace and rest now it can seem like utopia and it can seem like this is a million miles away from where we are you know but actually you don't know what's going on underneath you only see what you see on the surface you know things are beginning to shift people are beginning to awake enlightenment is taking place Therefore, the balance is beginning to shift, but you don't see it until you sort of almost get enough weight on the other end of the balance. Well, if you keep adding weight and adding weight and adding weight, it only takes one feather to tip the whole thing. And what we're doing is seeing people enlightened to their identity in sonship to add weight to God's kingdom. And then once the balance tips, in the favor of god's kingdom then everything begins to flow at the moment it feels like everything's going uphill going against the tide you know going against the stream and it feels like oh, this is hard work having to push something uphill because it feels like darkness is having sway and we're sort of trying to stop slipping down into darkness but actually it's not like that anymore it's it's actually more like this and it doesn't take that much to tip it. And then everything starts to flow from heaven on earth as it was designed to do, you know. But it it sort of requires us to see with, with our the eyes of the spirit, the eyes of our heart, and not just get panicked by looking at the world and what is going on symptomatically and actually say, no, God is at work. The kingdom is beginning to expand and increase. God's government is increasing and people are beginning to become enlightened to the true nature of who God is and their true identity and enlightened people will shift things.
And enlightened people will tip that balance. And it doesn't take, you know, an equal amount of people because enlightenment is exponential. You know, 12 enlightened people who are operating at a level of Jesus would tip the whole world. So, you know, now are there people fully enlightened as Jesus? Probably not at the moment. Um, but even if we got halfway there, of half half enlightened like Jesus, that's going to make a huge difference. And if we can get 80% enlightened, that's going to make an even bigger difference. And enlightened people can change things significantly. Um, and I believe that's what's happening. You may not see it. And people who are not wise and discerning, they look at the world and panic and get fearful. Ah! But actually, if you look with the eyes of faith and you look with you're at the eyes of enlightenment and you see what god is doing then you realize there's so much going on that people don't generally see but is preparing for the changes that are going to take place you know and, and then enlightened people will be you know establishing god's government not narcissistic people who who are power hungry and have an agenda which is not and well it's antichrist and it's it's not god's kingdom you know and therefore we need to see the correct enlightened people who are operating god's kingdom not just trying to make better systems of the world's failing systems because that is not going to be the answer making it better because it's still fundamentally flawed we need to see new a new government a new kingdom established on earth as it is in heaven and as sons we are responsible for that in in alignment with the father's heart but i think people are beginning to awaken and actually there are people who are beginning to awaken who aren't even calling themselves christians but they certainly know god but they may not know him as jesus but they they know and have a relationship which is more truthful sometimes than the religious relationships but people are awakening and ultimately they will find the truth that jesus has made a way to the father and our sonship is coming to the father and finding who we are and jesus opened the door to the father so we could find a relationship with the father and i think people are beginning to discover that relationship uh, and beginning to awaken to the truth. See, now, and I think that um, there was probably always uh, a, a group of people that were somewhat enlightened, I guess, all through the ages. Hmm. I don't think God was just doing this and our base and our, our prayers are binding and loosening and everything else over the centuries. I am taking, I, I remember uh, John or uh, Justin Abraham talking about even visiting john sanford one time years later uh mm. in the u.s and that he was actually going up to heaven during the cuban missile crisis and that mm. doing stuff and yeah. i had met john sanford you never know that well, yeah. from john sanford because he was quiet on that kind of stuff yeah it's just inner healing in that so i guess yeah. and we so there's i think like you said there's some people um that are, are enlightened I, I obviously uh, people that you know are would be somewhat enlightened that most people including ourselves i look at myself anyway would have no clue about what things might be going on yeah and it's okay because we only need to be doing what we need to be doing and therefore only at working who we are in our identity and but we know enough to start legislating for peace and legislating for transition and, and bringing love and bringing enlightenment and helping people find the true nature of God. You know, we know enough to be part of this process and part of this progressive unveiling of truth and be light to the world. You know, I think we know enough. We may not be operating in the councils of heaven or various galactic things or all, all sorts of stuff that's going on yeah 
but we can do our bit. You know, we can we can be our bit, really. You know, it's being who we were always supposed to be, which will bring about the change. You know, and that doesn't mean I need to know everything. You know, I don't need to know everything. If I tried to find everything, I wouldn't be able to even contain it, would I? So I just need to know what my bit is. And if if that is to help other people, then have some way of giving some discernment to help other people see maybe where they are and where they can find their own path in it, you know, which is which is the key. You know, we don't want superstars who are sort of do it. We want people doing this who are unknown, who are not looking for the fame or are not looking for the fortune. They're not looking for their ego. They're happy to be unknown, working behind the scenes, not telling anyone what they're doing, but doing it all the same because that is their part. You know, and yeah, there may be some faces of people who who are part of this that can inspire others and everything else. But it's those that are unseen who are doing most of the work, actually. You know, and those who have been around for hundreds of years in, in caves and other places who are, you know, part of the Desert Fathers, whoever you want to call on the ancient, you know, who are continuing to legislate. And as more and more people become enlightened in that sort of way and are not dying and are beginning to continue and not just be here for 70 or 80 years and then, you know, having to start again, they continue. But there will be people who right now are hundreds of years old that no one will know. They don't know where they are. They don't know what they're doing because they're not there to be known. They're there to function as a consistent voice and a consistent outworking of God's kingdom in love, you know, and that's how God does it most of the time. You know, when you add Elijah and it's, oh, woe is me, I'm the only one. God says, what do you mean you're only one? Four thousand of them over there, you know. It's like, you know, it, it's sort of God is always at work, you know. And if we just cooperate with Him and outwork through our, who we are, then we'll be part of this whole movement to change and bringing about God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, which is so, awesome. So, so Mike, are we still looking at the same? Like, I remember back if we went back a number of years ago, it was a bench and ecclesia 10 12, you know that kind of thing or is that kind of are we just getting together yeah like, like jeff and the gang would do and they're going up and they're just legislating and they're not even concerned about yeah i i that's think that's what they're doing but yeah it's always relational and it is governmental and i think if you know who you are as god's sons and you work together with each other in a governmental authoritative way then you know, you don't need to be known. No one needs to know you're a bench or you're, you know, you're operating governmentally. No one needs to we know that. We don't even need a bench anymore. Like, it doesn't matter. Well, in a sense, matter. it doesn't matter in one sense, but it what it does, it show it, it gave people an idea that they could be together in with one heart in authority rather than all doing it yourself. And yes, I think people can all do it. But when you come together, there is an increase and a, an exponential increase. You know, one can put a thousand, two, ten thousand, three hundred thousand. You know, well, you know, that that was the idea that that God operates as three father, son, spirit. Therefore, there was that pattern of people could come together who would operate as God operates in relationship to establish his kingdom government on earth as it is in heaven. But it's not the hierarchical structure that needs to be. And it doesn't have to be, oh, well, we're going to do this through this ecclesia or that or whatever. But I know God will give a blueprint and a mandate for whatever those groups need to be doing. And that's the important thing. It's what God calls them to do in relationship and in union with one another and fellowship. You know, it's being like God is in that union of heart and mind and purpose. And therefore, I think it's good that people can come together that way. But you don't want it to become protocol driven with no relationships. Because I know people started, oh, well, I've got a bench of this and I've got a bench of that. And you're like, really? OK, well, OK, well, what are you doing? And well, where's your relationship? And it was really it was just, oh, well, this is the latest fad. 
you know, and I'm glad it's gone away from the sort of, well, this is the fad and we've got to do it all like this. But I still think the principles apply. You know, the principles still hold that God wants relational union and government through relationship to be established on earth as it is in heaven. You know. I think sonship is more important than stewardship. They, yeah. When you realize that you have this relationship. Oh, totally. Yeah, it absolutely is. Because we're not, we aren't stewards. We are sons. We're co-heirs. There's a huge difference in having that servant stewardship, slave ship mentality, the sonship mentality, which is, no, I am in co-heirship of government with God in this. You know, and I have a part to play in that government. And if I find like minded people that come together in a union of heart with God and we only do what we're seeing the father doing. Then we're going to see more and more things change. You know? And I guess out of sonship just naturally flows stewardship. Well, it just what you come is, well, you you you're in air. You know, a steward doesn't own anything. They're just doing it on behalf of someone else. An heir is an heir to this planet, to this universe. We are heirs of this universe. So we're invested. You know, we're invested because actually it belongs to us. Therefore, it's like we need to look after it. We need to care for it. We need to govern it correctly. And I think that's really what will start to take place. And just one other thing. When you're talking about, I remember you said earlier, and I, and I, I think it was more of a generalization. We're always looking for restoration. I know, Jeff, you're looking at some of these world organizations that are, well, I don't know. But we're, are we really looking for restoration of government? No. We want the proper operation, but government, as you said in the beginning, doesn't work. No, we're, we're wanting restoration of God's government. Government, yeah. Not the kingdom of God, his government, which is peace. We're not looking for restoration of earthly governments or making them better or trying to trying to suddenly get all the systems which we develop, which are not God's kingdom. And, and that's why I don't believe in the whole seven mountain thing. Oh, we're going to take back the seven mountains of culture and we're going to rule on them. Well, no, we're not. We're seeing God's kingdom established. Which may have elements of family and other things as part of it, but it's not these things which society holds and we're going to christianize them you know and make them suddenly better we need a new kingdom a government which is heavenly not earthly and not based out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but based out of the tree of life if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much